Hey, how's it going guys? Welcome back to yet another video where I'm continuing to follow my journey on becoming an AI engineer. And in this process, I thought to myself, let me make a video and show you what kind of roadmap I'm following to learn AI engineering, how to work with LLMs. And hopefully this is going to help you a lot as well. If you also have an interest in becoming an AI engineer, or at least know a bit more about LLMs, how they work and how we can apply them uh, to solve problems. All right, so whenever I learn something new, I try to take it from a systematic approach. Basically, get myself a roadmap. Know a list of things that I need to go over, need to understand what are the concepts that's the most important for me to dive into. And that's exactly what we're going to look at right now. I think when you're starting off with AI engineering and you're trying to get into the field, it's a massive field and there's so many things that you will get lost in so much content that's available out there today. So your options are either to go and get a course and follow the course material as it would be laid out in a systematic way, or you can follow this predefined roadmap from roadmap.sh. They've got an AI engineering roadmap that's freely available for us to have a look at, reference, and we can learn some of the material that they have, but we can also then branch off and find other materials too based on this roadmap. So if you go to roadmap.sh, AI engineer, I'll leave the link in the description, you can find this beautifully laid out AI engineering roadmap of things and concepts and topics that you need to know. This is of course a recommendation on the way that you can study AI engineering and I think it's pretty cool. It lays out a lot of these segments and, and topics that you need to know when you want to get into AI engineering. And so it's a beautiful way to do this and keep track yourself of how um, far you are with your studies. You can also create your account. And then if you go through the content, so for example, here, AI engineer versus ML engineer, you can click on it. And there at the top, you can actually set the status to maybe to done. In this video, I'll tell you the difference between these two so we can set that to done already. So let's take a quick break away and learn what is the difference between a machine learning engineer and an AI engineer. Think of it as one works on the low level things, making sure that algorithms are optimized and new algorithms are invented and implemented in these pre-trained models. That is machine learning. You know, these engineers, they work on the core algorithms of these systems. They do that research. They play with the math behind it all. Whereas AI engineers, they are mostly there to apply these models. They do fine tune models and they do find interesting ways to improve it as well. Uh, but mostly they work on uh, implementation, right? And that is the biggest th distinguishing factor between the two. Machine learning engineers, think of them as like the engine builders of the AI world. And AI engineers, you can think of like the car designers and drivers right? They uh, use those engines to build something useful. Now, of course, there's a lot of overlap between the two fields as well, but you might veer and feel like you are interested in more building the under the hood stuff or basically building the integration level things and working with uh, solving problems with these AIs. So that's why I opted for AI engineering, whereas uh, machine learning engineering is way more involved in the mathematics and how these things really tick uh, under the hood. And there you go. Look at it. We learned something new. And that's how you can approach this roadmap. You can learn something. You don't always have to depend on the content on the page itself. It is helpful and you can do that. But you can also find a topic and learn more about that specific topic. For example, inference on YouTube or somewhere where there's a free resource for you available. And of course, if you want to go the paid route, get a course, they will have all the content and the roadmap for you. But this is a nice, easy and free way to get your feet wet when it comes to AI engineering. Great. So now talking about resources, I will show you a few resources that's going to be really valuable for you right now. And also, as I'm making these videos, I'm going to touch on all these programs and libraries and resources along the way. My goal is to teach myself how to really work with large language models and apply them to solve real world problems. And in that, I'm going to be using these tools and these libraries. So you'll get used to it as well. Right now, we're going to take a look at a few resources so 
so that you can get started already. So the first resource I want to introduce to you is this archive. Now, basically you won't spend a lot of time on here, but let's say there's a research paper that you really need to know the details of. You come here and you can read all about it. For example, here we are on the dashboard of Attention is All You Need, the research paper released by Google back in 2017 that changed the way that modern LLMs today work. They work with the transformer architecture. So if we go to the PDF over there and we actually look at this research paper, we can see that here's all the contributors. And if we just scroll down, this research paper is all about how the attention mechanism is all you need. It speaks about the transformer-based architecture model. It speaks about the encoder block and the decoder block. And as you'll see in later slides, we'll see how GPT implements the decoder block only. But there is very interesting things that you can learn from this research paper. Now, this is a research paper and it's a really math heavy, uh, all the concepts that they do explain. However, I read through it and I kind of could figure out what was happening. And it was really nice to see the different algorithms, although I didn't fully understand each one, was actually connected to each part. So it just gives you a good overlay of how these transformer models work at a very low level. However, I am going to show you a resource now that's going to explain to you this all in plain English. You don't have to understand a research paper, but I do want to make you aware of archive as it's a great way to see the original papers and how um, this contributed to LLMs today. Now on to the next, and probably I would consider this the most important resource um, when it comes to studying AI engineering is Hugging Face. So you can go to huggingface.co and when you get here, you can sign up. Think of this as the GitHub for AI. Basically, Hugging Face is a place where users can actually use and share their models, use and share data sets, have spaces, host apps, host APIs. It's really, really nice. And it brings everything that you need as an AI engineer all together in one place. You can also make use of the libraries that they provide to run inference, to fine tune models and play around with the parameters. It's really great. And we're gonna see a lot more of the hugging face, basically the library side and also some of this dashboard. But for now, I want you to pay attention to something special. So hugging face, if you click down on this drop down after you've made an account, it is free. You can go to the learn section. Now the learn section has a ton of these courses. What is MCP service, right? What are LLMs and basically agents? There's a ton of these. Now I would say I'm going to be starting off with the first one here, get a base understanding and work my way through. You can go to one of these courses, LLM, and if you open it, you can just follow it. They've got great videos, YouTube videos explaining basically what the content is. And I promise you, I've did this first part and it was amazing. It did help me to understand how LLMs function in bite-sized chunks. And also what makes this nice is as you go through these examples, at some points you can open up Google Workspaces or these Google Labs, which runs Jupyter Notebooks. Basically, you can then run these examples and these models and see the inference for yourself. Later on in other videos, I'm going to use the transformer library from Hugging Face that we're going to load in models and we're going to run inference on our machines, which you can follow along with. But you can do that in this course as well. So I would say it's a heavily recommended resource for starting your AI journey. And so in the intro section of the Hugging Face learning material, you'll start getting used to what is transformers. What is the transformer model? Like we've seen before in the previous resource I showed you, here it is again. This is the diagram of how the transformer model works. We've got on the left hand side, the encoder part and on the right hand side, the decoder part. Now, something interesting you'll learn is that there's three main types of transformer based models these days. You get the encoder only part, which is models such as BERT, and you get the decoder only models, which is models such as GPT. And then you also get the encoder and decoder model architectures, which are models such as T5 and BART. And this is really interesting, right? You might argue and ask, why doesn't all these transformer models use the encoder and decoder like BART? However, each one of these have unique purposes. For example, models such as BERT, they are trained differently. They are trained to recognize masked words in paragraphs or 
or pieces of text. They are really good at sentiment analysis, classification, things like that. They are also trained a bit differently, which you can see here right now. How they are trained is they are provided a piece of text, words are masked, and it's the model's job to know what that word is in that sentence. It also does bi-directional, so it can actually look at the whole context of that piece of text in order to work out which word is missing there or do a classification. And for this specific task, only the encoder is really needed because the encoder can give that context to us. If you look at decoder only models such as GBT, Llama and, and Mistral, you can actually see that it only depends on the decoder model. And what this is good for is text generation, autocomplete, assistance, the normal GPT that you chat with every day. And how they are trained, like you've seen before in my prior videos, is we give them a sentence and they work out the tokens and the attention needed. And at the very end, their job is to generate continuous text in a auto regressive loop. And they cannot see into the future. So they cannot look ahead of themselves. They have to look at the past tokens in order to generate the new ones. Hence why in the decoder only models, the decoder is only needed because it needs to generate new uh, tokens based on the previous context. And then when you look at the encoder decoder models, these models are really good for translation tasks because they get the full context and a bi-directional way, they pass it through a decoder and they basically have the input, which is the specific language, and then a translated language from that decoder. They're also great at summarizations and question and answering. And how these models are trained is they would be given a English text and we expect them to translate that properly into French maybe, like you can see over here. Now you've seen a little bit more about the transformer architectures and how various models implement different parts of that transformer model into its core and how it functions and why uh, it's needed to have separate tasks. By the way, these tasks are all known as NLP tasks. It stands for Natural Language Processing. It is the field where AI focuses on teaching computers to understand, interpret, and generate human language, basically to work with us on how we speak and how we communicate. And if you just look at what LLMs are, it's a subset of NLP. And then overarching everything is the broader AI field. So you get AI, then inside you get NLP, and underneath that you get LLMs. Now there's many different avenues and subsets as well, but just understand when you say you're an AI engineer, uh, there are many different fields. And so you can also be specific and say uh, you work with LLMs during the day. And this is just a nice breakdown for you to understand as well. So yes, as you can see, we've got a very big road ahead of us, but really rewarding as well. Because when we start understanding these systems and knowing how to work with them, I think we can do some really awesome and powerful and helpful stuff in the world today. What I do want to say is thank you for watching this video. I'm going to leave you with common uh, terminologies, basically, as I'm ending this video. So you can have a look through this and this will help you with those other tick boxes on that roadmap. If you have other suggestions for me studying AI engineering, you want me to look at some materials which I can show on my channel as well, please let me know in the comment section. I will leave a link to everything I've shown right now in the description as well. And I'm very excited to start this with you. So go and do this course at your own time. In the next few videos, we're gonna look at how we can actually work with these models, implement some stuff, experiment with things, and really have some fun on our journey to learning how to work with these mysterious things. Anyway, I hope you have a fantastic day. Cheers for now, and I'll see you in the next video.